Hi everybody, welcome to lesson number two in the Intermediate Tutorials for Microsoft Word. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning how to uh, wrap our text and images in different ways, insert an image from the web, and format an image. Once again, I have a completed sample of what we're going to make today. Um, again, I've built upon skills from many tutorials ago, from word art to page borders to just the most recent page colors, and of course there is clip art in here I'm going to show you how we can format that clip art how we can move the clip art around the page to fit in with our text which is text wrapping and I'm going to show us how to go on to the web once again and grab images and save them and put them into our document so what I'm going to do is open up a quite simple um, beginning form of what I just showed you and it basically just has my text in here. Now in order for me to start to recreate what I've already done, this is something I'm going to be projecting up on my screen for a back to school night. So I'm going to go ahead and add my page background color and I'm going to choose two colors to be yellow and pink and I'm going to click OK. I am going to insert word art and I'm going to do a blue word art and I'm going to type Mrs. Frasca's class 2012-2013 back to school night and I'm going to click OK. Notice my clip, uh, my word art appears in the middle of my document. The first thing I explained um, at the beginning was that I'm going to show you how to wrap your text with um, images and word art. What that means is that I'm going to show you how I can move this word art to the top of my page and move it throughout. Right now, if you see, um, you can see these squares around. I cannot, well, I can move my word art, but I can't move it exactly how I want. It's quite difficult. So this is where text wrapping comes in. If I double click my word art, you're going to come up to the toolbar and see something called wrap text. It means it changes the way we wrap around the selected object. For example, there are many different ways of text wrapping. There's in line with the text, square text, tight text, through the text, top and bottom of the text, behind the te te text, <laughs> and in front of the text. Now, if I just go back and as I was scrolling through each of these, you can see samples of what it, each of them look like. So I'm going to back up a step and I'm going to move this um, word art right in the middle of my text. So you can see exactly what it means to text wrap. Notice how this is in the middle of um, my wording. If I come up to text wrap and I go to inline with text, that's what you see right here. If I go to square, basically what happens is it moves my text as a square around the image. This word art is actually an image. Tight means that I have text on either side of my word art. Perhaps there are times that you want an image um, from the internet in the middle of a, a newspaper article that you've created. That image can go right in the middle of your text and the text will wrap right around it and that's called tight. You can have it going through, which is really no different, top and bottom where the text is on the top and bottom of the word art, not to the left or to the right. You can have it behind, which means that this image sits behind the text, or you can have it in front of the text. I always seem to prefer in front of the text, and I'll show you why. Now once you have these circles and these squares and this little green uh, circle on top, I can drag this anywhere I want on my screen, and it does not move my text. Oftentimes when we insert an image or word art, our text moves all over the place and then we can't figure out how to get it back. If you text wrap um, in front of text, any image or word art, you can have the freedom to move it anywhere you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my word art up to the corner here. Now if you're probably wondering what this green circle is, if I click this green circle, I can tilt my word art to be any way that I want. Okay, you can have it tilted this way if you wanted. You can have it tilted back just like so. And now I 
have my word art. I have wrapped my text so that this image is now free to move around the screen as desired and I've added my background color. The next thing I want to show you is how to insert images from the web. And once we do that, this is also another way of review of how we can wrap our text around these images. So I'm going to go out to the internet and I'm going to, because it's a back to school night document, I'm going to click images and I'm going to click back to school clip art. And I'm just going to grab two or three images for the sake of um, this sample doesn't really matter. I might grab this backpack. Remember, if I click the backpack, I right click, I copy the image, and I open up my document, and I right click and I paste. Now, as you can see once again, because I did not wrap my text around this image, I cannot really move this the way I was able to move this. Okay, notice the difference. I'm not able to do that. I'm clicking, I'm dragging, and it's not working. How do I, how do I wrap this? Again, double click it. You'll see wrap text. And you have the ability to change uh, the text wrapping however you want. I, again, am going to go with in front of the text. Notice how my image now covers my text. I'm going to shrink this up. By resizing my image. Okay, resizing simply means I click on one of these sides and I can drag up, I can widen it, I can shorten it, I can make it a little bit thicker, a little bit skinnier, and I'm happy with the size of this image. I'm going to click the green circle, I'm going to tilt it a little bit, and now I've wrapped my text uh, with this image. I'm going to go back to the, the net. I'm going to grab about one or two more clip art images. Um, let's try this little school bus. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it down here. Okay. Now, once again, because the image is now placed in the middle of the text, that's not where I want it, I'm going to double click the image wrap the text. I'm going to come on down to in front of the text. And now I have the ability to move this image however I want. And it does not interfere with my text on the side. Tilt him a little bit. I'm going to resize him by shrinking him up. I'm very happy with that. I'm going to grab one more image from the net. And let's grab this little apple. We're going to see, I'm sorry, we're going to copy. I'm going to put my image pasted in. I'm going to double click the image, wrap the text in front, scroll down, move my image by dragging it, shrinking it, resizing it however I want. I'm going to tilt him a little bit this way. And now I have my images in place. I did not interfere with my text. I was able to resize them how I wanted. I'm able to move them around anywhere that I want. Now because I chose a wrapping text that is in front of the text, I can, if I move this image, it's going to cover up my text. Now if, let's say I wanted this image to be right here, okay? And I wanted it kind of in the middle of all of this text. If I double click and I go to wrap text and let's say I do something called tight, notice my image, and I can keep moving my image to the right or to the left, my image now fits in with the text. It does not interfere with moving the text as far as splitting up the letters or the words, but what it has done is it allows the text to wrap around the image itself. If I moved him up here, again, the text wraps with the image. So you can actually, when you're adding images, you can play and you can move it anywhere you want along around the screen. It is not going to hurt your text. If you're not happy with it, you can always move it back. Okay, say I want my little apple here at the beginning. I want to maybe move my backpack down below. Once you format your image 
and you choose a wrapping, you can move this image anywhere you want. And that is the freedom you have when you're wrapping. Okay, so now I've shown you a text wrap tight. You can do in front. If you were to choose behind, that just means the image lays behind the text. It's again, it's really just something depending on whatever you're creating, you can choose that. Okay, now that we've done this, I want to show you how to format uh, an image. I've shown you how to resize by simply just clicking on it once. Okay, you want to have the four arrow points and you can move it around, stretch it and shrink it however you'd like. Another thing you can do is add a picture border. If I double click on this image and you come up to the toolbar, notice it says picture border. It says dashes and weight. Picture border means we can add a color, let's say black. Okay, a little black line forms around our image. You can change the thickness. You can give it a nice thick border, or you can give it a skinnier border. You can maybe make your lines dashed. So I've added a little bit more effect to my image. I've taken the image off the net, and now I've added a little bit of uh, definition to the picture. I can change the color to a blue if I wanted it to be blue to match the book in the um, image. I can do the same thing for here. Okay, I can change maybe to do a black border. I can do a nice thick border for back to school. And over here, I might make this one red with a dashed line, a skinny, nice skinny line. I can also do the same thing for formatting my word art. Okay, if I double click, I can, as a quick review from a few tutorials ago, I can change the outline of my word art. I can change the inside color to maybe I want it to be purple, okay, with a green border. Okay, if you double click any of these images and word art is considered an image, it brings you to the format toolbar of Word and you can choose really any of these different effects. You can add a shadow effect, okay, to give it some definition. You can add a 3D effect to it. It's really anything that you want to do for the purpose of your project. Finally, if I am, if I go back to my image and I double click it, there's something called recolor that you can click which means that we can recolor it to be gray, we can recolor it to be black and white, we can give it a washout, we can just keep it the same color that it appeared um, once we um, downloaded it into our project. It can be any of those things. Um, but So all you have to do is go to recolor and it gives you those choices and you can go gray, black and white or keep it the same. Same thing if I double click this bus and I go to recolor I can change it to black and white or um, gray scale. Maybe I'll leave that one a gray scale. And I'll double click here in format and I'll change this to be a washout. Okay, so you can again change your images to be anything that you wish. I'd like you to go ahead and I'd like you to create something that you can use in your classroom. Upload it to our Google site so we can share it. Um, be sure that you are adding an image from the internet, practicing wrapping your text with these images, go back and add word art, change the background colors, change the fonts, add design, um, any type of formatting. You can add a page border. Um, I didn't do that. I can actually do that right now very quickly. I can add apples for my page border. Okay, and if that's too thick, I can shrink it down and be nice and skinny. Okay. And I can move my word art so that it does fit within the border. Go to print preview and we have an example of another way we can use these different skills. Okay. So please feel free to go back and look at any part of the video, check out the PDF, follow step by step, all of the instructions are there, different toolbars, and I hope this you found this useful, and we look forward to seeing you um, with the next tutorial. Thanks, bye-bye.